My name is Michelle Delos, and I'm the executive director of the Fifth Avenue Committee. Um, I'm, I'm going to cue the slides in a, in a bit. Um, I, I want to tell you about a conversation that I had with Tish James uh, about 15 years ago. I was visiting her in her office on Hanson Place in downtown Brooklyn. I was there to ask her for money um, for Fifth Avenue Committee's uh, latest affordable housing project. Um, she had just met with representatives of the Brooklyn Public Library who were there to ask her for capital funding. When I came in, she was shaking her head. She didn't know what she was going to do. Um, she only had a few million dollars uh, of capital funds to give out, um, but the repair needs in the library's much less um, opportunities to modernize and expand them was overwhelming. Um, I was about to ask her for even more capital funding for affordable housing. I, I told Tish I had a solution. I said, we can build affordable housing on top of new, modern, and expanded public libraries. Um, FAC had been looking into building on low-rise buildings um, that could be redeveloped. Libraries came up on the list a lot. Um, a branch on Washington Avenue in her district, in Red Hook, um, and in Sunset Park, in another part, uh, another district. Um, combining new, expanded public libraries and 100% affordable housing is a no-brainer. There's such a need for both. Last night, nearly 48,000 people uh, slept in shelters in New York City. That number's actually gone down since COVID began, largely because of the eviction moratorium. Last year, 101,000 kids were homeless at some point during the school year. Before people were homeless, they were rent burdened. 460,000 New Yorkers are severely rent burdened, meaning that they pay more than 50% of their income towards rent. At the same time, the population of the city of New York has grown. It's grown by more than 600,000 people between 2010 and 2020. Meanwhile, New York's public libraries are aging. The average age of a public library branch is 62 years old. Many are small. You heard that there's 217, about 100 of them are less than 10,000 uh, square feet. And among all the branches, there's 900 million in state of good repair needs. The three public library systems together receive between 100 and $150 million in capital funding every year, um, certainly not enough to meet either the state of good repair needs, much less expand them. It's taken a while, and this is where I, we seem to be having different slides. Hopefully you can find the ones that say Fifth Avenue Committee on them, because um, uh, I have some pictures. Um, it's taken a while, but uh, Fifth Avenue Committee is now building the city's first 100% affordable housing project over a new and expanded 21st century library. Um, it's in Sunset Park, Brooklyn. Um, you can go ahead and move on to the next one. It's in Council Member Carlos Menchaca's district. Um, here's, an, here's the picture of the old library branch. Um, it was inadequate. Uh, you can move on. It was bursting at the seams. Um, and as you can see, needed supplementary air conditioning. <laughs> um, move on to the next slide. Uh, the population in Sunset Park has been growing. It's largely Latino and Asian. Um, and the old branch was barely uh, 11,000 square feet, and much of it was not even accessible to the public. And go on to the next slide. Um, they were literally using uh, the foyers to uh, elevator spaces um, to, to have programming. Um, and at the time that uh, Fifth Avenue Committee approached the Brooklyn Public Library, the branch had over $6 million in repair needs just to keep the same size and configuration of that existing inadequate branch. The new branch, we can go on to the next slide. Um, this is the building, the new branch. Yes, exactly. You can go on to the next slide. The new branch is going to have um, 20,000 square feet on three floors. There's going to be dedicated space for children and for adults. It has a lot of light. It's going to have computer terminals. Meanwhile, moving on, um, there will be 49 low-income families, including nine formerly homeless families, that are going to live above the library. The cost to build a standalone public library of this size and scope 
would have been nearly double what this project is costing. The library and the affordable housing share the same foundation, the same walls, and some mechanicals. And so the costs are being shared between the two uses. When tenants sign leases for their newly, new permanently affordable housing in the next few months, they will also get a library card. I can't wait for them to meet our local librarian, Roxana, and to enjoy the new space. Thank you. <laughs>